Good afternoon. Thank you for taking the time to watch this course. This course is prepared by Associate Professor Jonel Subic and Research Associate Marko Jeločnik, who represents the scientific staff from the Institute of Agricultural Economics from Belgrade, Serbia, involved in the realization of agroequine project funded under the Erasmus Plus project scheme. In the next couple hours, we will do our best to give you a brief but interesting glimpse in one part of thematic field linked to the sustainability of agriculture and farm activities. More precisely, we will try to provide you with some basic knowledge related to economic sustainability of farms involved in the organic farming. Above all, we will attempt to present you one basic, highly efficient and straightforward method that could be used in assessment of economic effects deriving from the practicing of the organic production, primarily of the small family farms. Also, we will show you some essential methods on how to easily perceive and evaluate the potential economic effects that could arise from planned investment in organic farming activities in order to make the best possible decision. So, today's course will be followed by suitable presentation under the title Economic Effects of Practicing and Investing into the Organic Farming. Fasten your seat belts as we are ready to take off. The agenda for today can be seen here, focusing on the general definition of the terms sustainability and sustainable development, sustainability of agriculture and farm, as well as the cost and investment analysis in agriculture. The fact that the main project focus is turned to organic farming means that we have to emphasize that it would not be possible to organize, practice and develop any production line within the system of organic farming without its full adherence to the principle of sustainability. So, we should start by defining the term sustainability and sustainable development. The core definition of the term sustainable or sustainability describes certain object as capable of being sustained or capable for long lasting. In natural sciences, the term sustainability usually refers to the method of harvesting or using a resource in such a way that is not depleted or permanently damaged. In other words, the resource has to last or to continue for a long time. In social sciences, sustainability more often relates to the use of certain method that possess the sustainability in describing the social interactions and relations. Needless to say, that from the early beginning of human society, sustainability has been primarily considered as environmental or ecological determinant. For example, in the time of ancient civilizations, such as Egyptians, Mesopotamians, Greeks or Romans, there was a demand for raw materials, which in response usually led to certain impact on the environment. They certainly have been facing environmental issues such as deforestation, land salinization or radical decrease in soil fertility. Moreover, from the time people were not only aware of environmental degradation but also of the presence of sustainable practices that kept the everlasting youth of the earth.
Although the expression, by care we can lessen the harmful effects we made, was coined many centuries ago, term sustainability has been officially recorded for the first time in 1713 by Hans Karl for Karlowitz. Prior to and during the 17th century, it was common that the wood was used both as the fuel and as the construction material in almost all production processes. It represented indispensable raw material in emerging industrial production. So, in the beginning of 18th century, caused by the massive wood usage for shipbuilding, mining or energy, as well as due to the first concerns in relation to the population growth, people became aware of very high risk of wood shortages, especially in the Europe. On the top of it, they had already witnessed the negative impacts that wood cutting and mining had on wildlife. Facing the fear that shortages could endanger their existence, the new way of perception of available natural resources and the state of environment was initiated, which urged the responsible use in the interest of the present and future generations. This thinking was somewhat similar to the current notion of the term sustainable development. The term sustainability was used for the first time in the German forestry cycles, suggesting the sustainable use of forest resources, which implied the balance between the harvesting of all trees and sufficient fresh seedlings which would replace them. Later, it started to be used more often in the sense of industry, affecting the levels of other natural resources or keeping the environmental cleanness. In other words, the idea of sustainability has evolved over the centuries as a contrary to the most common understanding of civilization progress. Meanwhile, in the last few decades, it has come to interconnection between the term sustainability and any segment of society's development. As the global definition for sustainability has been derived from the scientific reconsideration of relations between the nature and overall society, the term sustainable development could be seen as a meeting the essential human needs while preserving the life support systems of the planet Earth. Primarily, the level of nature, non-renewable resources and maintaining the capacities and purity of environment. It seems a bit incredible, but defining the sustainability or sustainable development concept as we know it today dates back to some 30 years ago. Officially, the term sustainable development was launched for the first time in 1987 in the famous Brundtland Report. Report also known as Our Common Future was produced by several countries gathered within the sub-organization of the United Nations, widely known as World Commission on Environment and Development, or just Brundtland Commission. In its beginning, the established working group, supervised by Commission's first secretary, Gro Harlem Brundtland, a former Norwegian Prime Minister, had a task to draw up a report detailing the impact of human activities on the environment. Initially, Brundtland Commission defines the term sustainable development as development that meets the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Up to present day, the meaning of the term sustainable development in essence hasn't changed. It was just redefined more precisely in the following two decades during the era of Ban Ki-moon foreman, secretary general of the United Nations, when his advanced definition describes the sustainable development as the pathway to the future that global society wants for any person. Furthermore, 
sustainable development has to offer a framework to generate economic growth, achieve social justice, exercise environmental stewardship and strengthen the overall governance. Nowadays, the concept of sustainable development is primarily linked to the principle of moral justice and the tendency that our descendants ought to inherit the identical development opportunities available to us. Essentially, that stresses the need for rigid control of environmental degradation and highly efficient use of available natural resources. Likewise, it relies on the fact that the man is only a fragment of the nature, so he has no right to change the nature irrevocably by carrying out his economic activity while endangering the survival of other living beings. Unfortunately, in modern global business environment, the term sustainable development is still commonly understood in terms of being focused solely on the sustainability of practicing a certain economic activity. In line with universality and historical recognition of the sustainable development concept, the global goals of sustainable development have been defined, primarily with the purpose of eradicating the poverty and unifying the criteria of development on a global scale. Their first formulation was established and supported by the vast majority of the United Nations members during the 2000s when eight Millennium Development Goals and over 60 official indicators for tracking the level of their implementation were defined. Subsequently, during the 2014, with the support of the United Nations, a list of sustainable development goals intended to overcome the shortcomings in previously developed Millennium Development Goals as to respond to new global challenges was developed. The newly proclaimed goals offered a vision of fairer, more prosperous and more peaceful and above all sustainable society that respects every individual. The goals are integrated and universal or globally applicable. They have a high level of understanding of both individual policies and priorities of national development while being based on the international law. One of the major role of predefined goals is to formalize the standardization of certain segments of social activity at global level, which usually has no direct support in current policies, but from the aspect of moral and ethics it can be an instrument of negotiation between the policy makers and standard developers in the establishment of future joint agreements, policies and actions. The list of 17 adopted Sustainable Development Goals consists of First, eradicating extreme poverty in all its forms. Second, eradicating hunger, achieving the overall food security, improving the quality of nutrition and promoting sustainable agriculture. Third, ensuring the healthy life and promoting well-being for all. Fourth, ensuring the inclusive and high-quality education while promoting lifelong learning for all. Fifth, achieving gender equality and women's empowerment. Sixth, providing availability and sustainable management of water supply and sewerage system. Seventh, providing access to reliable, sustainable and modern energy. 8. Promoting sustainable and inclusive economic growth, full and productive employment and decent work for all. 9. Creating resilient infrastructure, promoting inclusive and sustainable industrialization and encouraging the innovation. 10. Decreasing the inequality within and between countries.
Eleventh, making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient and sustainable. Twelfth, ensuring the sustainability of consumer and production patterns. Thirteenth, taking urgent action to tackle climate changes and their impacts. Fourteenth, preserving oceans, seas and marine resources and their sustainable utilization. Fifteenth, protecting, restoring and promoting sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems and sustainable management of complexes under forest, fighting against desertification and land degradation and stopping the loss of biodiversity. Sixteenth, promoting peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, providing access to justice for all, and establishing efficient, accountable and inclusive institutions at all levels. Seventeenth, strengthening the implementation of assets and revitalization of global partnership for sustainable development. We should emphasize that each goal in certain context could be linked with agriculture and rural development. Prior to definition of sustainability of agriculture, the term agriculture needs to be defined. As a set of economic activities, Agriculture represents the usage of biological processes on farm in order to produce products needed by people, primarily food, but also biofuels, fiber or raw materials for the industry. Essentially, it involves generation and later use of organic matter. Based in science and practical principles, Agriculture has generally turned to land cultivation, as well as growing, breeding and using the crops and domestic animals. Nowadays, it's usually the way of life for the persons engaged in this sector of economy and their families. Agriculture is considering an economic activity as old as human society. Initially, it emerged from the tendency to meet the basic human needs towards the food and self-preservation. It represents a development path of human activities ensuring primarily food security of the global population. Its initial steps were fruit gathering or hunting and fishing in the time of distant ancestors. Today, it evolved to the domestication of plants and animals, mastering of land cultivation or usage of available natural resources, with the main goal to breed plants and animals in organized way to obtain primary agricultural products. Today, Agriculture has grown into the highly regulated sector of economy with a seasonal schedule of production activities and involvement of several additional activities such as logistics, processing, agrotourism or global trade. So, along the development of civilization, agriculture has been transformed throughout the few stages from strictly natural production or food production in volume that corresponds to the basic needs of farm members into the commodity production that produce surpluses at farm level later exchange for other goods, services or money. Further, with implemented specialization, agriculture is expected to provide global food security respecting the basic food safety principles. Throughout the centuries, agriculture has been main activity within the processes of evolution of rural areas, by boosting the certain area economic growth 
and changing the rural landscapes. Currently, although it remains the initiator of economic activity for a rural territory, its economic impact is continuously weakening. So, rural communities are changing their expectations more rapidly towards the agricultural outputs. Besides the food, they require from agriculture certain level of local public services, environmental and landscape services, water management and flood control, or social care. In other words, related to agriculture, rural areas are transforming from mainly productive to somewhat consumptive areas. With above taken into account, appropriate definition for sustainable development could be a management and conversation of natural resources with their technological and administrative modifications towards ensuring and permanently serving the needs of current and future generations. In short, it should not endanger the environment, while it should be technically and technologically relevant, economically viable and socially suitable. In view of the global agriculture, sustainability is introduced through the integrated system of activities and procedures primarily related to crop and animal production conducted in wider rural area. Sustainable agriculture has to meet the interest of all stakeholders active in the sector of agriculture. In order to do it, it has to provide a food security for local population related to quality, quantity and structure of offered agro-food products. b. Preservation of natural environment. c. Growth in agricultural competitiveness and realization of totally produced surpluses. d. Efficient utilization of available agro-resources. and e stabilization of farm income and increase of the living standard of overall local rural community. In line with the regional concept and formal intention to preserve global natural resources for upcoming generations, sustainability of agriculture has to be based on three independent but overlapping and equally important pillars. a. Ecological sustainability, meaning the direction and level of development of agriculture has to be adjusted to maintaining the ecological processes. It has to use in careful and calculated way available natural resources such as soil, water, air, energy or biodiversity. So, it has to drive applied agricultural practices into the course of preserving or improving biophysical productivity of accessible natural resources. B. Economic sustainability, meaning that development of agriculture should be economically feasible and highly efficient. Among all, it has to provide satisfactory level of farmer's income enough for decent life of his family, as to decrease or eliminate all unnecessary production costs, which will ensure long-lasting sustainability and affordability of offered food products. Besides, it has to secure adequate channels for continuous agro-food supply and distribution. So, it has to drive the level of agro-food output and their costs of production and marketing in a way to be capable for easy adjustment to unstable environmental, social and economic circumstances. C. Social sustainability means the development of agriculture should be socially responsible to global society by providing enough food of satisfactory quality to overall population and enabling its fair and efficient distribution. It should enable appropriate technology transfer along with improvement of farmer skills and knowledge and provide 
the advancement of existing rural social and economic conditions. By its definition, organic farming is strongly rooted to ecological pillar of sustainability, as it uses inputs and techniques such as crop rotation, green manure and compost or biological pest control that are proven to be environmentally friendly. Organic farming eliminates or strictly limits the application of certain inputs such as synthetic petrochemical fertilizers and pesticides, plant growth regulators, antibiotics or genetically modified organisms, which makes production ambient vulnerable to cleanness of nature and food safety. Obvious link between the organic agriculture and other two pillars of sustainability could be seen in the fact that the organic farming is rapidly expanding in cultivated surfaces and number of livestock on global level. Its expansion is justified by strong public support to reducing the dirty technologies and inputs used in conventional agriculture, as well as by rise in consumers' awareness of another possibility to retain the positive impact on human health. In emerging new market niches, Organic farming could be a good instrument in creation of added value at macro or farm level, choose coming nearer to higher level of farm or rural community incomes. It could serve as important production alternative for farms or agricultural regions stuck in saturated bulk markets or which are economically too weak to compete the economy of scale or technologically advanced food production. Compared to conventional agriculture, conspicuous benefits of organic farming lie in better footprint on the quality of food, soil and water, available biodiversity, higher potential of profitability, visible ecosystem services, increase in local employment and lesser exposure to agrochemicals and other. Establishment of sustainability of agriculture encounters several global issues that can slow down or disturb its further development. Most important are climate change, globalization, high intensity of technological development and digitalization of global society, pressure of environmental pollution and rapid growth of overall population. For example, climate change primarily leads to the increase in frequency and intensity of weather extremes that create complex damages to agriculture and global society. Some estimations show that by 2050 only the damages in agriculture caused by hail could increase for 25 to 50 percent. A part of other economy sectors, agriculture at the same time affects the intensification of climate change and suffers the incurred damages from it. Alternatives to avoid or mitigate the negative effects of climate change have been identified in implementation of different measures that will adapt the used agricultural practices to new circumstances. In this way, over 60% of potential damages in agriculture could be eliminated. Adjustment can include optimization of input consumption, use of varieties and breeds tolerant to certain climate stressors, improvement in land management, shifting the production season, change in production structure, investment in equipping the rural space with elements of physical infrastructure, afforestation, insurance of production or enhanced pest and disease control. Sustainable rural development involves a holistic approach in order to even out the daily essential needs of rural population with reliable public utilities combined 
with adequate technical, socio-economic and environmental conditions in order to support regional economies and create stronger urban-rural linkages. Existence of rural communities has to be based on the development of several non-farming activities coupled with practiced agricultural systems, as only on that way they will become more resilient to economic and energetic shocks, climate change, environmental disturbance, social tensions and alike. In line with the United Nations Agenda 2030, rural areas and rural communities should be under the same regard as urban ones. Public administration, scientific community and professionals should give them the identical developmental opportunities through active policies investment in seed urbanization and respectively infrastructure projects. Although currently it is highly appreciated when rural areas are affected by positive trend of tech-tech revolution that overflow from nearby urban areas, they don't need the urbanization at any cost or urbanization that will ruin their identity and available ecological ambient. By explaining the macro approach to sustainability, it is easy to define the sustainability at the micro, that is, the farm level. Before all, there is a need to briefly define the term farm. Farm usually represents a piece of land with defined physical boundaries at which farmer or agricultural company carries out certain production activities, most often production of primary agricultural products. Farm is socio-economic and organizational unit whose managing provides the largest part of income to farmer or business owner. This is the basic production unit in agriculture, in which the farmer or farm manager makes independent production decisions in line with the best possible management, given natural resources and available assets used in food or service production. Dominantly, farms are micro-production units of vital importance for securing the local and global food security, providing various raw material used in processing industries or providing the overall development of local rural communities. Self-sufficient farms naturally consume the entire production for the nutrition of the farm members, while highly commercialized farms are strictly oriented to market and could operate in form or either legal entities, entrepreneurs or physical persons. In second group, unlike agricultural companies, there are family farms that usually carry out all production activities in their own or employ external labor in some extent during the production peaks. Family farms provide income to meet the needs of living of all family members while additionally create certain level of accumulation or savings. Today, farmer is seen as entrepreneur capable and ready to devise and implement in certain moment the best possible production alternative. He is able to choose the alternative that generates the highest added value and economic effects related to farm businesses. It is expected for farmer to be well educated, skilled and fully oriented to application of principles of good agricultural practice. Globally, small farms dominate. Some estimations show that farms with estate up to 2 hectares cover almost 31% of global crop production, along with the almost 34% of global food supply, while cultivating around 24% of worldwide available agricultural land. Besides, over the 65% of EU farms are smaller than 5 hectares, while almost 98% of farms in China 
or 78% in India possess up to 2 hectares of arable land. In USA, 90% of all farms are categorized as small family farms. Small farms are more oriented to food production based on larger level of crop diversity, while big farms are mostly turned to monoculture production. Besides the scientific control in securing the food security, small farms are very important for reducing the rural poverty. Unfortunately, small farms usually overuse the agrochemical in compared to larger farms which is mainly a result of farmers' lack of specialized knowledge and managerial skills. Taking farm sustainability in consideration requires better understanding of developmental processes in agriculture through the historical context of agricultural revolutions. The first agricultural revolution began in the period of emerging of early human civilizations by distinguishing the agriculture from other human activities starting with land cultivation and livestock breeding. The second agricultural revolution started with the industrial revolution which enabled agriculture to cross the line of self-sufficiency and to start creating market surpluses oriented to feeding the growing urban population or to provide raw material for the processing industry. The negative consequences of excessive industrialization in agriculture and constant run for high yields at any cost in symbiosis with influence of other economic and non-economic activities have led to gradually decrease of natural balance and quality of the environment, above all endangerment of the human survival. All this initiated the third agricultural, so-called post-industrial or digital revolution that follows the principles of knowledge-based development. It was expected from it to respond to the requirement for sustainable intensification of agriculture in attempt to increase productivity in agriculture while minimizing environmental degradation and securing certain social benefits. Finally, it led to fourth agricultural revolution, so-called smart agriculture, in which agriculture, like other sectors of economy, started adopting advanced technologies based on mix of physical, digital or biological progress. General characteristic of third and fourth revolution is that they respond to rapid changes in the approach to agricultural production and life within the rural space. Moreover, the breakthroughs of general and specific knowledge in agriculture and its close connection with IT, biotechnology, genetic engineering, pharmacy and medicine were such that today in developed economies agriculture can compete with some of high-tech sectors. Farm sustainability is defined as ability of farm to operate, survive and grow within the particular socio-economic and natural surroundings, while keeping up in longer period its administrative, economic, ecological and social functions at satisfactory level. At farm level, besides all general pillars of sustainability, one more is usually included. So we have a. Economic sustainability that defines the level of productivity in use of available resources as well as economic efficiency and financial stability of certain farm. b. Social sustainability that relates to accountability for preserving the welfare of farm members or whole rural community. C. Ecological sustainability 
which represents the level of farms' responsibility and behavior towards the issues linked to natural environment. And D. Managerial sustainability, that shows the level of efficiency related to organization of farm activities and establishment of relationships inside or outside the farm estate, as well as the level of farm adaptability to change in surrounding that fits the main affinities and abilities of the farm owner. Although the farm sustainability should harmonize all elements that affect the preservation or increase of overall farm capital, including economic, social and natural capital, in practice it usually focuses solely on economic aspect which could be shown on a globally common example. Usually under the pressure by economic issues arising from the economy of scale, if farmer strives to secure his short-term competitiveness, he will be forced to ignore certain aspects of farm sustainability. In internal conflict among the pillars, focusing on expected level of profitability, farm generally cannot fully compensate caused ecological and social costs derived from the agricultural production organized at the state. Overused agro inputs lead to higher yields and farm incomes, but in same time endanger the natural and social capital, which most often is very pricey or nearly futile, even for economically powerful farms to optimize the structure and intensity of production that will perfectly balance the sustainability pillars. Equalization of pillars' importance in such moment is normally directed by scientifically generated norms and tech tech knowledge converted into the principles of good agricultural practice, certain instruments of public support, constant rising of farmers' awareness, and requirements from the market. To summarize, sustainability is not just a measure of high yields and profit. It has to be oriented as well as to production savings, especially those that protect the available farm resources. Therefore, in order to be sustainable, farm has simultaneously to produce the required quantities of high-quality food, protect its resources from overuse, achieve profitability, and be sure that its production fully complies in environmental principles. The farm sustainability is framed by technological development or by the use of those technological alternatives that lead to decrease or elimination of negative environmental consequences and simultaneously strengthen the economic efficiency of the farm, while they are not opposed to the development goals of the local community. In addition to of general interest are the production alternatives that improve the quality and quantity of produced food, especially if they are ecologically labeled. In accordance with its sustainability, the farm has to show business durability in the long run, as well as resistance to global food, energy, price or climate shocks. Factors that affect farm sustainability are grouped towards the predefined pillars and following could be brought out. A. Economic factors involved. Implemented production system. Established production lines and activities. Level of specialization. Economic power. Farm size. Level of used capital and assets. Capital turnover. Financial dependence economic capability to achieve profit, presence and openness for tech-tech innovations, and other. b. Social factors involve farm resilience on public support and policies, type and intensity of the relation with agricultural extension and local community, access to social infrastructure, 
impact on rural dynamics and other. C. Ecological factors involve level of biodiversity at farm, type and volume of used or produced energy, impact of climate change accidents, practicing of water, soil, fertilization or waste management, implemented type of pest or disease control, and other. D. Managerial factors involve personal characteristics of farm members, their production experience, level of general and specific knowledge and skills, aspirations, practicing of non-agricultural activities, used marketing and supply channel strategies, level of use of external labor, and others. There are several ways how to farm can boost their overall sustainability. First, processing raw agricultural products, which ranges from pure mechanical cleaning, cutting, weighting, packing and storing primary agricultural products to producing the food products of higher degree of processing. Second, implementing vertical integration which is seen as good solution for highly specialized farms, including the activities for conversion of certain raw agricultural products into the final food products, such as conversion of grains into the floor or even bakery or pastry products. Third, joining the different types of producers associations, clusters or cooperatives. Fourth, changing the structure of agricultural production, which exhibits in a change in a share of certain crop or animal product, introduction of new crops or livestock production lines, or shifting the ratio between the plant and livestock production at mixed farms. Fifth, diversifying farm activities with introduction of non-agricultural activities, such as agrotourism, production of handicrafts or running of the grocery shops. Sixth, changing previously used production system at the farm, such as skipping from conventional to organic or integral agricultural production, or moving from field crop production to production in protected area. Seventh, implementing certain agrotechnical measures like irrigation or use of certain innovative technology. Eighth, implementing quality and production schemes or product certification. Ninth, changing the used source of energy at the farm, for example, changing the fossil fuels with solar, wind, or geothermal energy that is characterized with environmental friendliness. Tenth, producing agro-food products tagged with specific local characteristics, identity, or that are labeled with certified local designations. As the main focus of the course is the economic effects of practicing and investing into the organic farming, the basic method linked to the assessment of one part of economic sustainability of family farms will be further elaborated. Furthermore, theoretical background will be followed by adequate practical examples. Coming to the aspect of economic effects derived from farm-based production, farmers often have a low impact on sales prices and realized incomes, as selling prices are usually a result of confrontation of overall supply and demand on a certain market. However, by adequate control of the production activities and reduction of justified costs, 
or elimination of needless costs, farmers can affect greatly the total production costs and generation of overall profitability. There is a need to briefly define the term production costs. They represent monetary expression of spending the material goods, labor, services or public expenditures required for realization of farms' business mission. Overall production costs have two sides, fixed and variable. Fixed costs don't change with the change of the volume of production, so they remain constant even if there is no production activity. Variable costs occur with the beginning of production activity and they are differing in proportion to the output. Most often they are being proportional to the volume of the production. Usually they include raw materials, labor and energy costs. In agriculture, variable costs could differ towards the observed production line. In plant production, they usually refer to cost of seeds and seedlings, agrochemicals, fuels and lubricants, energy, external services of mechanization, labor, binder, packaging material, water, dripping tapes, mulch foil or variable part or general costs. In livestock production, they usually include costs of feed, water, medicinal treatment, fattening cattle, fuels and energy, external services of mechanization and equipment, labor, packaging material, straw or cell dust as litter, of, or variable part of general costs. If there are processing activities at the farm, they usually involve the costs of raw agricultural material, as are grains, oil seeds, fruits, vegetables, meat, milk or honey, various food additives, water, energy, external services of processing equipment, labor, packaging material or variable part of general costs. What is the main farmer expectation towards the cost analysis? Primarily, to identify the group of costs or individual costs that can be reduced or avoided, which would subsequently improve achieved farm business results. So, in assessing the certain production line besides the value of overall costs, their structure is important too. Market environment is characterized by high volatility that affects the farm production. In such conditions, in order to survive and maintain the business activity, farmer is forced to frequently change the production structure at the farm, and in some extent the volume and method of production in certain production lines. Timely and quick adjustments in production are allowed by the application of calculations based on variable costs, so-called contribution margin. They could provide almost immediate economic assessment if obtained level of production is able to cover the incurred cost in particular line of agricultural production. Additionally, they enable the efficient cost management and decision making as they allow quick adjustments in production structure in response to the changes in the farm business environment. Getting the negative or very low value of contribution margin over the few production cycles in certain production line could be the perfect signal for farmers to leave the given production and to focus to those production lines that yield the higher profitability. Therefore, calculations based on variable costs could serve as good instrument 
for assessing the quality of adopted technology at the farm, or economic effects of changing the intensity or technology in certain production line. The contribution margin in crop production is mainly calculated per unit of production area, while in livestock production per head of cattle, or in food processing per unit of produced food product. Calculation of economic indicator of contribution margin in production of certain agro-food product considers the total sum of generated incomes according to the market value of the primary and by-products, increased for allocated subsidies, and then subtracted for the sum of generated variable cost specific for observed line of agricultural production. Contribution margin could be mathematically expressed by presented formula. Practical explication of the assessment of economic effects derived from certain production line established in agriculture will be given through the example of farm active in tomato production in small greenhouse of 0.05 hectare size. In order to better perceive the advantages of the method, the two alternatives will be given. One of the farm involved in system of organic production and the other of farm producing the tomato conventional way under the same capacities. So, in this case, the main goal is to assess the economic justification of the change in production system used in vegetable production in the greenhouse. And there is the underlying question, whether the change of conventional production could boost the farm sustainability. In essence, we will evaluate the economic effects of switching the conventional system of production into the environmentally friendlier alternative. There is the assumption that tomato production in greenhouse dominates on small family farms involved in vegetable production. Besides, this line has been selected as it is more intensive than the production of tomato on open field. Apart from predominant production of tomato, farm is also involved in production of peppers, cucumbers, hot peppers, onion, lettuce and other vegetables. Along with the greenhouse, farm has complete set of required machinery and equipment usually used in vegetable production available. The greenhouse is highly functional, with aluminium construction, covered with double foil, enabling the production of tomato out of season. In the sense of production, farm is oriented to conventional production with the application of the advised quantities of agrochemical in optimal period. So, Produced tomato is high quality and very safe for human nutrition. The fruits are harvested in several phases and further classified according to size and shape. The fruit is being sold on the local green market. Tomato production is carried out from seedlings of well-yielding varieties adapted to greenhouse production with the application of full agrotechniques including the irrigation with drip system driven by a low pressure electric pump. All necessary inputs are purchased locally. Farmer is considering the possible economic effects of production if he switches to organic system of tomato production. It could be seen 
that by the unique production capacities, farm is approaching more than 45 higher incomes by practicing organic tomato production. Although with the slightly reduced yields caused by specific way of production, incomes in organic production are dominantly affected by much higher selling prices at the constantly growing local market. In relation to the incurred variable costs, there are some additional explanations. Farm is buying tomato seedlings from locally approved nursery garden. Respecting the system of production, every year from one half to two tons of bovine manure is being spread on the production area. As organic production avoids the use of mineral fertilizers, the basic fertilization will be done by higher dosage of bovine manure, with additionally applied chicken manure too. In relation to the plant protection, farming generally use just the allowed preparation in organic production. Tomato is being packed in used wooden crates of 10 kg. In order to eliminate weeds, tomato seedlings are planted under the mulch foil. Both systems of production involve drip irrigation using the drip tapes and low pressure electric pump of 1.5 kW. In conventional production, costs of irrigation assume the costs of used electricity from public power grid, costs of used water and fee for the use of public water facilities. In organic system of production, the required energy will be provided from the installed solar panels and wind turbine. So the costs of irrigation are reduced for the costs of electricity. Other costs include the costs of repairs at the installed equipment and other unplanned material costs. Additionally, within the material costs in organic production, the costs of annual inspection of the representative of certification body and the costs of laboratory analysis of used water, soil and produced fruit were also included. The values of those costs are not linked to the size of production surface. Generally, the costs of engaged labor involve the costs related to handling the manure, mineral fertilizers, pesticides or fruits at the farm estate as well as the part of the costs of sale on the green market along with the other unplanned labor costs. Costs of other listed activities are gained in relation to the value of required time for their realization. Costs of mechanization cover the costs of soil rototilling, 
as well as the combi transport of used inputs or transport of tomato fruits to local green market. Comparing overall sums of variable costs gained in both production system, it could be seen that organic production is burdened with for 16% higher sum of variable costs. With the application of both systems of tomato production, the positive contribution margin is obtained. Economic result per unit of production area favors conventional to organic production, which is a result of the significant presence of laboratory and inspection costs that don't differ related to the size of production area. Observing the total production area, gained contribution margin is almost 2.4 times higher in organic than in conventional production. In both production systems, within the sum of the total variable costs, the share of material costs over 50% dominates. Besides, there is a relatively high share of labor costs as a result of small dimensions of greenhouses in which it is impossible to apply automation or mechanization of certain production activities. Obtained economic results show that introduction of organic production of vegetables in greenhouse could boost the farm economic sustainability, which is important in relation to expected continuous growth in food prices. Besides, change in production systems additionally empowers the farm's environmental sustainability as it avoids the use of agrochemicals and substitutes the used energy in the process of irrigation with green energy. So, implementation of organic vegetable production could generate the multiple winning situation as it is a good solution for farmers, consumers, local community and society as a well. whole. From the aspect of farm sustainability, whether being focused on enlargement of production capacities, changing system of production, introduction of processing or non-agricultural activities at the farm, purchasing new or additional machinery, equipment, livestock or supplies, renovation or building and equipping of certain farm facilities, implementing the elements of, in of infrastructure or enlargement of energy consumption, making proper investments is required. So, sustainability is followed by the investment process. Investment usually considers the transfer of financial assets into the purchase or building of new capital goods 
which are not the subject of current consumption, but they will be in function of consumers' good and services production in the long run. Investment represents the complex process of interconnecting the several economic and financial elements into a practical activity of advancement and enlargement of a social legacy. It represents the purchase of the assets with a hope that they will enable creation of profit and broader well-being. It also refers to any investment in human capital, such as acquiring knowledge, specific skills or experience. Investment assumes making of a sacrifice in current moment, expecting the certain benefits in the upcoming future, or it considers giving up from present values towards the uncertain future reward. There are different types of investments in the sector of agriculture. According to their purpose, the most proper division would be on real and financial investments. Real investments contribute to establishment of new or improvement of existing production at the farm. They lead to the lower costs enlargement of volume or increase in the quality of produced agro-food products and services. Real investments could appear as a new investments, such being the purchase of certain capital good, or current investments, such being the investment in reconstruction of obsolete capital goods, investment in environmental protection and protection of human and animal welfare. Financial investments are linked to the acquisition of property rights of already existing highly liquid assets. In line with the required labor involvement, investments could be labor intensive or capital intensive. In relation to the number of subjects involved in their realization, investments could be individual done by one farmer or group investments which require more participants. Investments could result in obtaining fixed assets, intangible assets or permanent working capital. In practice, financing of investments is usually realized by own funds from farm accumulation or by external funds such as bank or public loans and grants. Term investment involves the following elements. First, object of investment, for example, investment in land, plantation, equipment, machinery, production facilities, property rights, and other. Second, investor, who can be physical person or legal entity that invests in certain object of investment. Third, investment process. It represents activities related to the transfer of financial assets into the investment object. And fourth, Financing process that represents activities related to obtaining financial funds required for investment realization. Specificity of investments in agriculture is that they are usually affected by specificities of agriculture. Primarily impact of natural and climate conditions, reliance on biological processes, mismatch of production and working period, or expressed seasonality. Generally, investments in agriculture involve investing in First, land and land improvement, for example, investment in enlargement of estate, 
spatial arrangement, cleaning and leveling of the parcels, improvement of physical and chemical characteristics of soil complex, implementation of drainage system or irrigation channels and other. Second, establishment and upkeep of plantations. For example, investment in perennial crops, windproof and anti-erosion belts or plant nurseries. Third, basic herd. For example, investing in establishment of new or enlargement of existing herd, replacement of unproductive animals and other. Fourth, production, logistic and processing facilities. For example, investing in farm buildings, greenhouse, cold storage, stables, warehouse, silo, garage, fencing, well and other. Fifth, equipment, tools and mechanization. For example, investing in replacement of obsolete or purchase of new units. Sixth, property rights, license or implementation in quality schemes and standards. And seventh, human capital. For example, investment in education, trainings or improvement of farmer skills. Investments are the factor of the development of agriculture. Without investments, previously set developmental goals at macro and micro level could not be fully realized. They are the tool for maintaining the sustainability both for farms and rural communities as they shape business, ecological and social environment within the sector of agriculture and rural areas. Investments are prerequisite for tech-tech development, proper infrastructural equipping or further increase in efficiency of farms, overall development of agriculture and rural communities. Also, they initiate additional diversification on non-agricultural activities, presence of entrepreneurial initiatives and improvement of rural people's well-being. Logic and reasonable motives behind supporting the investments in agriculture, farm activities and rural communities reflect in. First, agriculture and farms as production units have to satisfy continually increasing need for high quality agrofood products. Second, agriculture and indirectly farms are significant providers of jobs and powerful tool in general poverty reduction. Third, rural areas dominate over the urban areas. Fourth, agriculture is highly related to the most of economy sectors, providing them valuable inputs. Fifth, generally agriculture attracts a lower number of investors, although it doesn't require large initial capital. Sixth, agriculture is one of the most subsidized and supported sectors of economy. Seventh, agricultural land could be observed as an inexhaustible factor of production. And eighth, Agriculture is one of sectors of economy that is affected by the most by climate change and environmental pollution. The main investment characteristic is its irreversibility. Once it's done, there are usually limited number of alternatives for which investment object can be used which is especially evident in agriculture. For example, 
it is assumed that previously purchased laying hands will be just in function of X production or established greenhouse will be used just for growing of vegetables, rarely for medicinal and aromatic herbs or flowers, while tractor could be used for land cultivation or crop care in many lines of crop production, as well as for transport of agro inputs or agro products. Process of investing in agriculture is additionally affected by farmers' risk aversion. In practice, economically weak farms rather will accept lower level of investments and returns in exchange to face lower risks, while well-to-do farms with more diversified incomes are more likely to accept higher risks with expecting the higher returns. In relation to these uncertainties and slower adjustment to changes in production circumstances, farmers are generally unwilling to invest or they make just some optimal level of investments. In order to avoid bad investment decision that could lead to drop in expected profits, reactivation of possible risks and harmful events, each investment previously has to be properly analyzed. This activity should be done by generally used assessment methods, which will eliminate farmers' subjectivity. Investment calculation is an analytical method used for determining the economic effectiveness of investment. It considers economic effects derived from the entire production process conducted over the life of investment or during the period of loan repayment. It represents a fundamental base for decision making towards the farm enrollment in previously planned investment process. It looks for answers whether financing of certain farm investment should be done or not, which among suggested projects alternative should be implemented, or what is the best possible farm capital allocation and perfect time for investment realization. Development of investment analysis supposes a prior chronological determination of all cash receipts from the investment or values of production as well all cash expenditures needed for investment utilization or expenditures required for a purchase or establishment of investment object and its usage and maintenance. Cash receipts and expenditures are observed for the entire period of investment exploitation, expressed in annual amounts as determined cash flow. Investment evaluation requires closest possible estimation of prices of final agri-food products and production costs that will occur within the life of investment. Investment evaluation could be done by many methods, which mutually differ in relation to the fact whether they consider the time value of money or not. It is known that at current moment money is more valuable than in years, time or later, as the time reduces its value. In relation to cash flow, that is receipts and expenditures of investment, if you look several years in the future, money obtained or spent in upcoming period is worth less today, depending on the used interest rate and length of the investment life cycle. In line with it, the methods are grouped into the static and dynamic ones. 
Main advantages of static methods are their simple use and easiness to calculate, while main disadvantage is insufficient reliability of the obtained results, since they don't consider the entire life of cycle of investment, as they are usually based on business results from one representative year of investment exploitation, assuming that in this year farm had reached the full utilization of implemented investment, which is usually in fifth year. These methods are good solution for pre-investment studies, assessment of low-value investments with short life cycle, or during the period characterized by low interest rates. Contrary to them, dynamic methods respect the current level of interest rate expressing in this way mismatch between the values of money in initial moment of investing and during the period of investment object usage. In line with needs, requirements, economic skills and possible level of economic literacy of farmer that runs the small family farm, just the basic static method will be demonstrated. Although there is no strict prescription of methods that should be used in static investment analysis, in practice most common are Total output, total input ratio Net profit margin Accounting rate of return and simple payback period. Total output, total input ratio represents the ratio between the total incomes or market value of production and total expenditures or overall costs of production, both derived from the investment exploitation in previously determined representative year. It is expressed by the economical efficiency coefficient or profitability coefficient, whose mathematic formula has the following expression. According to this method, production could be considered economically efficient if the value of coefficient is greater than 1 or equals to 1, while in this case investment is considered as justified. Net profit margin represents the profitability of production shown as the ratio between the profit and total income that derive from the investment exploitation in observed year. It is calculated according to the following formula. Investment could be considered justified if the value of gained ratio is greater than calculative interest rate, or sometimes the current interest rate on the capital market. Profitability of investment could be considered as the ratio between the profits gained from investment exploitation in a representative year and total value of investment. It is presented by the indicator of accounting rate of return, which is calculated by the following mathematical expression.
investment could be considered justified if the value of indicator is greater than calculative interest rate or sometimes the current interest rate on the capital market. Simple payback period represents the ratio between the total value of the invested financial resources and net cash flow generated in a representative year of investment exploitation. Assuming that all cash flows gained during the project exploitation have approximately equal values. Indicator defines the period of investment usage needed for returning of previously invested financial resources. It could also define the number of years required to compensate the initial outlay with the financial assets generated or accumulated in net cash flow as the difference between a cash inflows or incomes and cash outflows or expenses. Method is commonly used in practice. Indicator could be mathematically expressed by following formula. Logic and mechanism of application of defined static methods for evaluation of economic efficiency of investments will be practically presented within the following example. The main goal is to access the economic justification of farms entering into the certain investment or to find out if the investment provides the economic sustainability to the specified farm. Observed small family farm is traditionally oriented to organic vegetable production in plastic greenhouse. Farm is located in semi-urban area in city hinterland. In this moment, farm has on disposal three technically unified plastic greenhouses with productive capacity of 500 square meters each. According to the market requirements, farm is in position to enlarge its production capacities by building and properly equipping the new plastic greenhouse at the property, as it could provide undisturbed access to water and public electric grid. Before going into the investment, Farmer wants to check if this venture is too risky for him. By making the appropriate economic assessment of planned investment based on appliance of static methods. Mainly, he will test if the investment in environmentally friendly production alternative and linked capacities is economically justified for the farm. Farm will procure modern tunnel type plastic greenhouse with effective size of 500 square meters and height of 4.75 meters. Greenhouse will have galvanized double pipe construction covered with double foil and the possibility for lifting up the sides of the production facility that will allow extension of production period to almost whole year. Greenhouse will be purchased together with adequate equipment involving the electric water pump of 2.2 kW and proper irrigation system that could allow drip and sprinkler irrigation. Investment object will be purchased locally and it will also cover the costs of transportation and required installations. Farm production portfolio involves the tomato, cucumber, peppers, onion and garlic, spinach, green salad, 
leek, radishes, chard, carrot and other vegetables. To simplify the investment analysis, crop rotation will consider just the tomato, spinach and green salad. All commonly used inputs such as allowed agrochemicals, seeds and seedlings, chicken manure, mulch foil, tape drip lines, raffia, packaging, clips and other are purchased in local agropharmacies. Produced vegetables are primarily realized at the farm gate, while some small quantities are sold at the local green market. Production activities involve two full-time employees, while in the season peaks additional involvement of up to two external workers. Farm has all required agro-machinery, production and infrastructure facilities such as motocultivator, equipment, space for packaging and storing the vegetables, couple of sheds for storing inputs, access to public power grid, garage, land, few wells, transportation van and other that can be used in newly established production facility. Total value and the structure of plant investment could be seen in the table. Investment considers procurement of required fixed assets as well as appropriate volume of permanent working capital. Specifically, fixed assets involve production facility and required equipment. All values are given in euros. In line with the general agro-accounting practice, investment in permanent working capital as a part of investment in plastic greenhouse and required equipment for vegetable production is determined as 10% of the value of fixed assets. Within the structure of total investment, more than 90% will be linked to the procurement of fixed assets while more than 80% relies to the purchase of needed production facility or plastic greenhouse. Financing of investment assumes partly the use of farm's own financial resources, where the part of used sum will be additionally refunded with the public grant for farm investments in greenhouses establishment. The refund will amount up to 60% of the total value of investment in fixed assets including the VAT. The rest will be financed from the bank loan. Technically, as visible from the table, farms' own financial assets will cover entire value of permanent working capital and larger part of fixed assets. In the structure of financing sources, share of farms' own assets is almost 50% higher than the share or borrowed capital. Analysis was based on the calculative interest rate of 3.05%. It represents weighted interest rate gained after the crossing of share of used internal and external financial assets with the value of their interest rates. It was assumed 
that international financial assets could be saved in the bank under the interest rate of 1%, while farm could take the commercial credit under the interest rate of 6%. It was also assumed that the life of investment is linked to the credit's repayment period of 5 years. Formation of farm incomes that derive from the purchased greenhouse considers crop rotation of three crops – tomato, spinach and green salad. Incomes also include a sign value of incentives for the establishment of organic production that are received on annual basis in the sum of 221 euro per hectare, as well as subsidies for covering the costs of annual control and certification. Assessment was based on the fact that farmer could generate around 20% higher incomes while practicing the organic production which primarily derives from the higher prices of organic products at local market. State financial support is slightly over the 1% of the sum of overall incomes. Farm is continuously striving to compensate the achieved products quantity with higher quality. Fruits classification doesn't relate to fruits quality but to their unstandardized size and shape. Occured rights off, mostly consider spoiled vegetable or mechanically damaged fruits that are not for human consumption. Assessment includes two more assumptions. As farmer is fully experienced in applied production technology, it is expected that there will be no oscillations in achieved yields, as well as in vegetable prices during the entire life cycle of investment. So, analysis considers the immutable level of annual incomes. Costs of direct material consider the costs of main inputs, such as seedlings and allowed agrochemicals. Costs of seedlings covers the costs of their production at the farm after the previously purchased seeds of vegetables. Agrochemicals include chicken manure and allowed pesticides. Used inputs and applied volumes are usually advised by local extension officer or representative of National Association of Organic Producers, while they are also in line with the general recommendations and practice. Simplifying the analysis, the optimal and immutable quantity of all used inputs towards the selected crops under the price stability is assumed. So interannually, all costs in the certain cost category have the unified value. Electricity is mainly used for running the irrigation system while fuel is spent in some activities that imply the use of mechanization, such as soil cultivation prior to planting 
of new crop or transportation. Considering fairly balanced water needs of used crops, almost unified level of transportation and utilized mechanization, observed production could assume identical annual cost of energy. According to the technical specification, change of foil at the plastic greenhouse is planned to be carried out in the fifth year. In respect of grown vegetable species, different packaging plastic bags, wooden or plastic crates or cardboard boxes are usually used. In order to prevent deadlocks in work of irrigation system, Filters for a mechanical purification of water are changed on annual basis. As used water is drawing from the farm swell, there are no costs of used water. Annual amount of depreciation for procured greenhouse and equipment is calculated under the generally used depreciation rates in agro-accounting practice. Its calculation considers the price of purchased fixed assets decreased for the value added tax. Salvage value of investment considers the unappreciated book value of fixed assets left after the repayment of entire credit, additionally increased for the value of permanent working capital. In order to facilitate the analysis, it is assumed that the repayment period of the used credit and life cycle of investment will last for the same period, precisely five years. Costs of labor involve just costs of external labor that will be engaged in newly established greenhouse. Gross salary will be in line with average gross salary usually paid for this kind of activities at local level. It is expected that both full and seasonal employees have skills and experience in vegetable production. Farm will take a 5-year credit in amount of 5,000 euros from the commercial bank. Grace period is 1 year and credit is burdened with 6% interest rate. Annuities will be paid quarterly, calculated by the method of equal annuities. Non-material costs primarily involve local or national taxes related to production process, for example, tax for melioration, property tax, costs of maintaining the mechanization and equipment, costs of external control and recertification of production activities, as well as the costs of required laboratory analysis. Soil and water analyses are made every second year usually before the start of vegetation. 
This farm is practicing three crop rotation. Fruits of each crop are analyzed after the harvesting. Fruit analysis amounts 127.56 euro per crop, while soil and water analysis amounts 85.04 euro each. It could be seen that within the sum of total costs the group of non-material costs is dominating. This is primarily caused by the fact that growing of organic vegetable in greenhouse is labor-intensive activity. Quite a high share in the structure of total costs has the costs of direct material. Besides, it could be noticed that derived cash outflow is fairly unvaried over the entire life cycle of investment. After all incomes and costs linked to the investment exploitation are individually reconsidered, the projection of profit and loss statement for observed period could be developed. It could be seen that the value of net profit is well balanced during the life cycle of investment as a result of negligible oscillations in gained total expenditures. Significant cut in last observed year is mainly caused by the costs that will be paid for changing the foil at the greenhouse. In shown example, the income tax value of 10% was assumed, which is valid in national tax legislation of certain countries. Formation of economic flow is required step in further investment analysis and in development of static assessment indicators. Final results gained in economic flow don't involve obligations towards the financial resources contained in paid annuities, along with the costs of depreciation. In initial and last observed year, the value of the financial result is the highest. In initial year, it is affected by the value of public support directed to the purchase of certain fixed assets in organic production, while in last year is affected by expression of some level of salvage value of previously exploited investment. Now we have formed all elements required to calculate the value of predefined static indicators used in evaluation of investments. Economic effects of the farm business depend on both the market value of realized products 
any incurred production costs. If market value of farm output overcomes the incurred costs, certain level of gross profit and possible accumulation that could be later reinvested in some farm activities will be gained. Otherwise, farm will realize the loss and possible insolvency. In our case, observed investment could be considered economically justified as the value of economical efficiency coefficient is higher than one in a representative fifth year of investment exploitation. Related to next indicator, investment could be also considered economically justified as the value for the net profit margin ratio in representative year is higher than the assumed calculative interest rate of 3.05%. Sharp decrease in indicator's value in representative year is affected by the costs of the foil change. Considering accounting rate of return, investment could be also considered economically justified as the value of indicator in a representative year oversteps the value of supposed calculative interest rate. So, during the project exploitation, the price of source of financing could be covered and above it, certain level of earnings will be realized. Again, sharp drop in indicator's value in a representative year is caused by the costs of foil change at the greenhouse. According to the value for simple payback period, investment could be fully returned in 3 years and 4.81 months. In line with the gain indicator's value, it is expected that the investment will be economically effective as its exploitation will successfully compensate initial outlay before the date of credit expiration. Instead of conclusion, we could make a summary of results derived from the static evaluation of economic efficiency of investment in greenhouse building and purchasing of appropriate equipment used in organic production of vegetables that are gained in representative fifth year of investment exploitation. 
According to the obtained values of used assessment indicators, there are following findings. A. Value of the total output total input ratio is higher than 1, precisely 1.04, meaning that investment is economic. B. Value of the net profit margin, respectively 4.84%, is higher than calculative interest rate, respectively 3.05% which means that investment is accumulative. c. Value of the accounting rate of return, respectively 5.5%, is higher than calculative interest rate, respectively 3.05%, which supposes that investment is profitable. d. In line with the value of the simple payback period, it could be assumed with a high probability that investment will be repaid in 3 years and 4.81 months. According to the gained values, investment could be considered as farmers' economically justified decision, whose realization will certainly improve economic sustainability of observed farm. Furthermore, investment in fixed assets that will initiate practicing the organic food production could additionally boost the farm's ecological sustainability as mentioned production leaves shallow environmental footprint. In the same time, plant investment seems socially desirable as its realization requires engagement of external labor that originates from the local community. So, Investment in such a business opportunity will generate the multiple win situation as it represents good solution for farmer, local community and the entire society. Thank you for attention. We hope you enjoyed the course and above all you found many interesting things that improved your previous knowledge. As suggestion for additional reading and finding of more details linked to observed topic, could be advised the checking of publications published within the realization of the Agro Eco In project, as are Course for Trainers, Organic Farming Eco Market and Their Capitalization through the Entrepreneurial Initiative or course for trainers, entrepreneurial innovation in agri-food science. Of course, you can contact us at any moment through the emails and we will try to respond you with adequate answer as soon as possible. We wish you all the best in your further academic or professional activities.